Blender's data transfer modifier. What does it do? Well, one thing's for sure, Google will not tell me. I asked it nicely, but it just wouldn't tell me. So I just beat its face in and went and messed around in Blender till I found out myself. If you get on the internet and you look up what the data transfer modifier does, the best thing you will find as of right now is the official Blender documentation, which let me just go out of my way to say is one of the worst, most inunderstandable things I've ever seen. If you ask me, someone needs fired. Unfortunately, aside from this document, there's nothing that explains how this works. You look it up on the internet and guess what you get? Nothing. They all just copy the documentation. So how do you really use it? You know, what do you use it for? That, my friends, is the question that I'm here to answer. Welcome to my channel. This is Game Abuse Studios. So, how do we use it? The data transfer modifier works by transferring data from one 3D object to another, whether it be normals, vertex weights, edge data, vertex paint, yeah, all that stuff. But to actually transfer anything, you have to have two models, two objects. So first, let's determine what type of data we want to transfer. As you may already know, you can transfer normals. Not to be confused with normal maps, normals are the angle at which light bounces off a face. And for those of you who don't know what a face is, a face is what fills in three or more edges. By default, when a face is made, the normal is facing straight out from it. In rare cases, you might want to change this. Another thing that you can transfer is the vertex weight data. Say you painted vertex data onto a model, well, you can transfer it. So, because it's the first option here, I'm going to start with vertex data. For this example, I'm going to duplicate the default cube and then add a data transfer modifier to the one that I've duplicated. I'm going to be transferring vertex data from the first cube to the second. And trust me, this gets fun. Obviously, the source mesh, the first mesh, has to have data to transfer to the other mesh. So let's give this cube some vertex data. To do this, I'm going to paint a vertex weight directly onto the cube by coming up here and then selecting Weight Paint. By default, the weight that we are painting is set to 1. So if we click one of these corners, it will turn red and fade off into rainbow colors and blue. And for those of you who don't know this one, the colors you're seeing here are just here to visualize the weight that you've painted onto the mesh. Red being 1, which is the maximum, and blue being 0. Just like all the good tutorials on the internet, am I right? <coughs> you suck. So I've just painted this one vertice on the corner here, which gives us data that we can now transfer. So to proceed, we need to go back to object mode. Once we're back in object mode, we need to go over to the modifier and select vertex data. Hitting this little arrow, we can see that there are actually two types of data that we can transfer. The first option is the type of data that I'm currently transferring, vertex groups. And also, by now, you may have noticed something. I'm referring to it as three different things. Vertex weight, vertex groups, and vertex data. Don't worry, I'll explain it all in a second. So let's go ahead and select vertex groups. Now, how do we know it transferred? Fact is, it didn't transfer anything yet, because we didn't select our source mesh. So hit the dropper and select the source cube. Okay, I'm transferring so much data, I don't know what to do with it. Well, so I thought the first time I did this. Actually, it didn't transfer anything again. You remember a second ago I said this was going to get fun? Well, here's the fun. It didn't transfer anything. Well, okay. Why? It's because I did something a little bit wrong right at the beginning so that I can show you how to fix it. You notice how I moved the destination cube out of the way a little bit? Yeah, they have to be overlapping, or so says the internet. That's all the information I got out of Google before I had to end it. But, really, they don't need to be overlapping. See this right here? Yeah. This button right here makes it so that they don't have to be in the same spot and overlapping. Very, very convenient. Very nice. Thank you, Blender. Actually, no, no thanks to you. Your, uh, your documentation doesn't even mention this. Or does it? 
Get away from me. Put simply, this uses the mesh's origin, that little orange dot there, as the center point instead of the 3D cursor and or 000 on the uh, XYZ. Hooray, we've transferred some data. Yeah, no. The fact is that we haven't transferred crap yet. Good God, Blender. What more do you want me to do? Do you want me to kiss your feet? I mean, if it's the only way, then... Uh... Yeah, no. There's actually one more thing that we missed. It's just one little thing, but it is a bit hidden. In order to successfully transfer this data, you actually need to reference it. <laughs> and people say C++ is hard. Have you ever heard of Blender? Okay, so let's say we do transfer the data. How do we tell it's transferred? I've been running around in circles, jumping through hoops, trying to transfer this data, but how do I know I'm on the right track? Well, believe it or not, you can actually view weight paint in edit mode. Otherwise, you would have to go up here and set it to weight paint mode, which is boring. So to do this, let's go ahead and go into edit mode. And then let's go up here and hit this down arrow. Scrolling down almost all the way, we can see this option that's called vertex group weights. Select that, and now we can see that our cube has turned blue. Symbolizing that there are no good tutorials on the internet, and I don't know if you can see it, but it's waving a white flag. It has given up. Anyway, back to object mode. We need to make a reference between the two datas. There are two ways to do this. I'm going to go over the hard way so that you'll know exactly what's going on. Afterwards, I'll show you the easy way. I'm going to come down here and go to the Object Data Properties tab. Now I'm going to click my source cube, and you'll notice something. There is a vertex group already assigned to this mesh. Where did that come from? Oh <laughs> well, this was magically added to the source cube whenever I weight painted it earlier. And you know how magic is, it's just as straightforward as all the tutorials on the internet. <clears throat> anyway, as you might have noticed, the destination mesh does not have one of these. That's because we didn't weight paint on it yet. But don't even do that, no. What you need are two vertex groups with the same names, one on the source mesh and one on the destination mesh. To transfer, specifically, vertex data, you not only have to have two models, you have to have vertex groups on both of those models. And when you add this modifier to your object, you're actually missing this. Basically, whenever you add a data transfer modifier, it will not transfer data by default. When you add the modifier, it will try to transfer data. Only problem is, there's nothing to transfer the data to. So, Really, all you have to do is either keep the name that this has right here, which is just group, and I don't suggest that, it's kind of lame. You can run into some problems. Uh, name it something. I'm gonna name this one... Ass. Just because I feel like it. So now I need to go to the mesh that we're transferring the data to, and add a vertex group, and name it Ass. And there we go. We should now actually be transferring data. I think. Okay, now you remember I said there are two ways to do this. There's an easy method and a hard method. We just did the hard method. So, I'm going to go ahead and show you the easy method. To do this, just come up here to the Modifier Properties tab, and click Generate Data Layers. That's it. That did exactly what we just did. Yes, I know. I just forced you to go through a grueling process of, of you, you know what? I'm not sorry. Anyway, now I can explain why I was calling it by three different names. You know, vertex groups, vertex weights, and vertex data. Here's the thing, vertex weight and vertex data are exactly the same thing. However, a vertex group is completely different. A vertex group, you can think of it as the shell that holds the data. It's a name that is associated with the data that is the weight. And I hope to God that makes sense. All right. We should actually be transferring data now. Let's go back into edit mode and see if it's showing up. Uh, wait a minute. F <sighs> so here we are again. Another hoop we have to jump through. What did I do wrong? Well, nothing, actually. It's... Just the modifier doing this. Yeah. Basically, the modifier by default has a checkbox unchecked, so you can't see the changes that the modifier is making while you're in edit mode. 
That would be this button right here. Sneaky little bastard. And there we go. Now we can clearly see that our vertex weight has definitely been transferred. Honestly, I feel like this option should just be on by default, especially with this modifier, but you know, it's Blender. All right, now I'm going to prove to you that this is actually being transferred based on the name of the vertex group. What, did you think I was lying? Here's the proof that this is actually referencing the data that we're transferring between the two objects. Change the name here and boom, it's gone. Change it back and there we go. Proof that this is being referenced behind the scenes. I'm sure I could actually get into the coding somehow and, and see this, but yeah, I'm a little lazy for that. All right, that is everything you need to know on how to set up the data transfer modifier for transferring vertex data. Okay, so after all that, we managed to transfer some weight data from one cube to another cube. So what are some real practical uses for this? What can you really use this modifier to do? Because I know and you know, you don't want to be transferring weight from one cube to another. You might as well just skip the whole process and just paint it onto a new cube. You know, because it's a cube. There's, there's really no point. But what if you have a character that you want to weight paint clothes onto? Here's a fun little fact. Models don't have to match each other in order for you to use the data transfer modifier on them. So me doing cube to cube data transfer? Yeah, doesn't matter. I could have transferred from a cube to a sphere if I wanted. But probably the best use for this modifier is to transfer the weights from a character's body to that character's clothes. Okay, so I'll go model a character. For this, I'm just going to speed up the video and I'm going to model a beanbag character. Sound effects. Okay, this character is extremely basic, I know. Anyway, I modeled some eyes for him and uh, I'll call that a sleeve. Okay. As you can see, I also modeled a hat for him. Anyway, how do we get all this stuff to move along with him? Well, we either have to weight paint on them directly, which is boring, or we can transfer them using the data transfer modifier. First, of course, though, we have to rig him up. Back when I was new to Blender, I remember watching tutorials for this, and every single time they would skip and then never tell you what they did. Okay, let's rig this guy up by going to Add or Shift A. Under Armature, I'm going to select Single Bone. Now I'm going to go into edit mode and you can't really see the bone. So let's make it to where it's visible in front of everything. To do that, we need to go down to the object properties tab, scroll down to viewport display, expand that, and then check this. Okay, now that we can see it, let's go ahead and hit three and you'll notice that there are these lines. If I zoom out, they're easier to see. That is what's known as one unit. I have the scale settings set to default, so that is one meter. While I was modeling the beanbag, I set him to three meters. So if I select the top of this bone, which is by default already selected, if I hit E and then Z and then one, it will scale it up on the Z axis by one. Now I can hit Shift R and it'll repeat that for me. And there we go. It might need a little bit of fine tuning depending on your model, but for this character, that's all I need. Let's go back to object mode. Now I'm going to parent the bones to him. So for now, let's ignore the accessories. I'm going to hide them. It's important that you select the mesh and then the bones. Otherwise, you'll be parenting the bones to the mesh, making the mesh the one that's in control, which sounds really complicated, but honestly, it's not. To parent it, you need to hit Control P, and then you need to select an option. For this, I'm gonna select with automatic weights. Now we can go into pose mode, it's in the same menu as the weight paint mode before, and we should now see that whenever we select a bone, it is outlined in blue, indicating that there are no good tutorials. Okay, okay, fine. This indicates that you are in pose mode and not edit mode. <laughs> screwing up everything. All right, so rotating a few of these things, you can see it's, it's moving, but it doesn't look so good. That's because the weight painting by automatic weights is kind of crap. And I don't really know how to weight paint too well, but I would love to get into it. Anyway, I'm going to fix this crappy paint job to the best of my ability. To do that, I need to go back to object mode and then actually select the bones and then the mesh. 
Now we can go to weight paint mode. And not only can we select the bones by holding control and clicking, but we can also see the weight paint. Okay, so let's just select the bones individually and rotate them around a little bit. And obviously you can see there's... Eh, it just doesn't look right. Anyway, there is a reason I modeled the character the way that I did. Because my character is a cylindrical being, I can literally fix this like it's nothing. I'm literally just going to smooth it out. To do that, I'm going to go up here to the weights option, click it, go down to smooth, and now it pulls up some options in the bottom corner. I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to set the subset to all groups. And for the iterations, I'm just going to slide that all the way up. Okay, now it looks fairly good. All right. Now let's go back to object mode and unhide the clothes. Now let's use the data transfer modifier to transfer the weights from the character to the clothes. I'm going to start with the, uh, the sleeve. To do this, we need to parent it to the bones, just like we did the bean bag. So select the sleeve and then the bones. Now hit control P, but instead of selecting automatic weights, we're going to go with empty groups. Now, I think from earlier, you should probably know what it means by groups. <laughs> so, that means that whenever you're parenting either empty groups or automatic weights, it's actually creating vertex groups on your mesh, but this time with names corresponding to the bones. In this case, bone, bone 001, and bone 002 because I didn't name them. Now, getting this mesh to follow your original mesh should be pretty easy. As we know, the data transfer modifier can transfer weights from one mesh to another. That means that the weights that I had automatically painted on and then smoothed are the ones that we're wanting to transfer over to this mesh. So all we have to do is add the data transfer modifier to the sleeve and then select the beanbag mesh with the dropper. Then select the type of data we're going to be transferring down here. Of course, now you know how to set up the vertex groups because of earlier. But in this case, you don't even have to do that or even hit generate data layers because it already applied groups to the mesh. That's what it meant by empty groups. In this case, empty for us to transfer data to. We don't want any weights in there already because we know what we're transferring. Well, and it wouldn't matter anyway because by default, the data transfer modifier is set to replace. Now you'll notice, however, this isn't working. Even though we've transferred the data, there's nothing. I left the beanbag posed for a reason, we should be able to see it moving when it's working, once the data is successfully transferred. Well, I just walked you through it, and I know the data is being transferred, so it should be working, but it's not. If you're an experienced Blender user, you probably know what's wrong. It's one little thing that could easily go overlooked. This one is so hidden, my god. In fact, we've been staring at it this entire time. The reason that it is not working is simply because the data transfer modifier is loaded after the armature modifier that was applied whenever we parented with empty groups. And that's it. So we can just load it first by dragging it up above the armature modifier. Ta-da! Now it's following the bones. Where the modifier is in the stack doesn't actually matter as long as you apply it. However, it is really nice to be able to visualize the changes that you're making. Although, as you can see, there are a few artifacts. Okay, so let's do the exact same thing for the eyes and the hat. It's important to note that you do not want to uncheck Object Transform. Take the hat, for instance. If you uncheck Object Transform, then the weight that's being transferred will actually be from the character's feet because it thinks the hat is still down there. Therefore, the character's feet will actually control his hat even though his hat's up here. That's the difference between local space and global space, either where your object is from the world origin or from its own center point. And of course, by ticking this button, you can switch between the two. If you, for some reason, did want to turn object transform off, you could just edit the model and move it into place in edit mode, or just apply the object's location. It would be the same effect as just leaving object transform on and moving it in object mode, because all it's really doing is mapping from a different location. All right then, let's get rid of those artifacts. Starting with his sleeve coat thing, let's go ahead and go over to the modifier and change the method used to map the data to the new mesh. By default, it is set to nearest vertex. We're going to change this to nearest face interpolated. And now you can see, it's pretty smooth. Okay, let's do the same thing for the hat. Nearest face interpolated. 
And now let's do it for the eyes. Looks like I forgot to apply the subsurface modifier when I was modeling. And one final time, nearest face interpolated. Now everything looks great. And as far as I can tell, this works flawlessly. Just remember that you cannot keep the modifier on the character if you plan to pose them around. At least not without having some really crazy clipping. And another thing to remember is before you apply the modifier, go back into pose mode, select all your bones, and hit Alt-R to reset their rotation. The bones have to be in the default pose before you apply the modifier, unless of course you want it to clip, and then you can go into weight paint mode and smooth the weights again in case there are any leftover artifacts. So, anyway, I'm done with this. Moving on, another thing that you can use this for is a lot of other modifiers. Yes, you can use the data transfer modifier for other modifiers. Have you ever noticed that some of the modifiers have a little selection box with the vertex group symbol in it? Well, guess what? You can use vertex groups with weight paint on them as a mixing factor for modifiers. Only if the modifier has the option, though. If you know what a float value is, that makes understanding this extremely easy. Remember I said red was 1 and blue was 0? Well, all the other colors are everything in between. If you don't know what a float is, that's fine. Just think of this as a mixing slider. The more you slide it, the more it's mixed. However, in this case, it's based on the values in the weight paint. So I'm going to show you one final thing before I end this video. Don't worry, there will be a part two. I'm actually going to show you something that I figured out in the process of figuring out the modifier. At the beginning of the video, when I said I just messed around in Blender until I learned, I wasn't lying. It took me nearly four months to figure this thing out. So I might as well go all the way. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you is this really cool thing. I don't really suggest using it for what I'm gonna use it for. Although you can, I'm actually working on a tutorial to do this in a much more meaningful way. Anyway, let's dive right in. You remember how I said you can use the data transfer modifier with two models that don't match each other? Let's say I model a swirl. Now what if I use the data transfer modifier to transfer the weights from this to the plane? How the heck would that work? Easily. All you have to do is select Projected Face Interpolated. Something to note is that the topology mapping options at the very bottom of the modifier directly affects this mapping method. But don't mess with them too much unless you have to. Setting the ray radius to a small value can cause Blender to crash. And besides, this is working just fine. Now I'm going to hit apply and then I'm going to add a displace modifier. Select the vertex group that's been transferred over, and you can see it's kind of wonky because it's set too strong, but anyway, we've essentially displaced a mesh without even using a displacement texture. I'm working on a method to use this for texturing. And of course, once I figure that out, I'm making a tutorial. I would say I'm done with this tutorial, but I've still got all the other types of data that can be transferred. Well, actually just a few other types. Funny story, as far as I can tell, replacing edge data with the data transfer modifier is just a waste of time. After all, that's simple data that you can just go and put even on a high poly mesh with little to no effort. I could be wrong. Feel free to call me out in the comments on anything I got wrong in this video. After all, I can only learn from my mistakes. In part two, I'm going to be going over how to transfer custom normals, why you would want to transfer custom normals, and what they can be used for. Thanks for watching, and also, hey, one more thing I forgot to mention. There's this little thing right down right, right there. Oh, oh, I, I know, I know. I hate it too. People always trying to force you to subscribe. But were you not entertained? Uh, I mean, that's up to you. Hit that subscribe button only if you want to. I'm not going to force anyone. This has been a fun video. Thanks for watching.